Let's see if anyone joins. Well, apparently we're live. No. Zero watching. I think people are a bit bored with my stream, so I'm going to continue anyway, I think. If you are joining the stream, I'm just going to do a few bits and pieces. I'll have a look at some chips that have just arrived. Finish cleaning off that A500 board I looked at yesterday. Um, and I'm going to make a couple, uh, well, well, I'll show you. I'm going to clean up a couple of adapters and then maybe have a look at Spectrums. I'm not sure. We have got somebody joined. Hello, Charles Duval. Whoa, talk about randomly just in time. Hi, Chris and everybody. Yeah, I think you're on your own at the moment. I don't think anybody else has joined, but uh, yeah, just try and bear with me and uh, hopefully some more people will join and keep the chat busy. Um, so I'll just uh, put you down there a sec. Let's just zoom a little bit. Um, so we've got the chips we had uh, from uh, yesterday there. One of them's got a cross on it. This is the one we looked at in yesterday's stream, this 500. Uh, the 1488, I think, was faulty. The 1489 was okay. So those, uh, I'll send those back to uh, Tom. Uh, the other thing I was just going to do quickly, uh, other than just give this board a, a quick clean, is just tidy up this. I talked about this, uh, you know, showed this yesterday on the stream. What we'll do is trim up trim down some of these wires cut off ones that are not needed because there's only um, i don't know several on there that are actually needed and um, we'll find a housing <clears throat> now i went looking through some of the housings um i'm going to make one of these up myself as well but i'll do that later because it's not particularly interesting i don't know i might do it later in this stream if we get bored um you can see this was in uh, alison chalice's uh, old stuff here let me just uh, take this out of here it's uh, strangely enough got i can get it in Let's just rip the bag because it's a bit uh, damaged that bag anyway. Yeah, it's got the uh, right connection there, although it's got pins here, which could be a bit of a problem. But I've got a load of those, so that shouldn't be a problem swapping that part out. Uh, but I've got a housing. That's the main thing I want is just a housing. Because the idea is, you know, if you just trim these down and conceal that in there, you could just stick a label on it saying RS232 test or something. Um, anyway, I'll make the other one up after, but we'll, we'll tidy that up in a second because it's not going to take very long. Uh, so I'll just have a look who's joined the chat uh, in a minute. Rose is uh, here, by the way. You can just see her whiskers. <laughs> yeah, close up on the eye. Let her go out because she's trying uh, to get out. There you go. Um, where's those things I was going to show you? Oh, here we go. That's what I was talking about yesterday. Gender changes. Yeah, as you can see, you've got like uh, male on one side, male on the other. So, yeah, you can just plug it into a female and then you've changed it to a male. Um, let's have a look. PVC, this time I'm very early. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know how long the stream's going to go on, and it might not be spe a spectacularly interesting stream, as none of these really are. It's me just trying to pass some time um, and socialise a little bit with you guys where I can. Um, afternoon. Afternoon, Retro HQ. Nice to see you here. Um, yeah, Retro, my mind was blank then. Retro HQ is the chap that makes the Starlink flashcast. And also, the Neo uh, Pocket, uh, Neo Geo Pocket, and the, I think the Jaguar. Is the Jaguar released yet? Or is it just getting ready to release? That looks super exciting, actually. I was thinking of getting the Jaguar just for the purposes of uh, being able to play around with one of those. Uh, I've got a pad, I'm making my way there, I've got a controller, <laughs> as I talked about the other day, but um, yeah, I've not got a Jaguar yet, but I should get a Jaguar soon. So it's Kim, hi Chris, hi Room, uh, I just missed a question there, Charles Duvall, fix that dissolving pump yet? Um, I've not revisited it to be honest, because it was working really well towards the, you know, that chip, that second half of that chip yesterday. Uh, Sean from Wicked Afternoon, Edwin Newlander, hi, how are you? Okay, thanks, much better than I was yesterday. Dermot Sweeney, hi Gang. Hope everybody else is uh, feeling okay, by the way. Did you assume this uh, boss gender? <laughs> Made it uh, near enough to start for once. Uh, Retro HQ, thumbs up. Thank you very much. So it's Kim. Find your streams, Chris. Very good, mate. Don't sell yourself short. Well, that's much appreciated. I, I just don't know. Yeah, carpet session. 
I didn't know what else to name it. I don't really know what we're going to be looking at here. I thought of a few things. I've got a few things to do. The other thing I was going to uh, show you here, we'll probably start with this in a minute. I've got two real-time clock chips here for an Amiga 4000. So that's what those two boards are lacking at the moment. One of them needs a battery as well. So we'll, we can fit those, test those in a minute. That's going to be really quick and short and sweet. But it, it put my mind at rest as to the cause of the issue with the real-time clocks on both boards. Because I'm not still still not sure, I'm not 100% clear. I mentioned the other day about the, um, one of the chips there that I fitted that wasn't the right part, a uh, HC part instead of a HCT part, because that was all I could find. And I thought it would be okay, but then I found it wasn't working. Neither of the real-time clocks are working. So it'll be interesting to prove, it wasn't just the real-time clock chips, are both of them faulty? I know one of them is definitely faulty. I'm not sure about the other one. The other one behaves the same way in both, both boards. And as I said in that other stream, that leads me to believe maybe it's the HC chip being incorrect and it needing to be HCT. But we'll rule that out by getting around to that in a minute. Um, and what about the D25 serial converter to D9? Yeah, there is one of those as well. I've probably got, I don't know, I've got some serial stuff here. This is an excess, a bag of excess connectors that I do not know what to do with. <laughs> so again, if anybody's short of these things, I've got loads of them in here. Even some uh, the super wide ones for SCSI, I think that is. Is it 50 pin? I think it may be. Maybe. Um, yeah, I've got so many excess connectors here that came from Allison's stuff. Sorry, that bag was probably muffling out my voice. Um, and I'll show you, this is another one here, this is some of the ones I already have and some of the stuff from Alice and Chalice. So you can see again, I've just got tons, tons and tons and tons of stuff here. The crazy thing is out of all of this, out of a huge collection of these uh, D-type uh, connectors here, you'd think I'd have some uh, of the ones for the Amiga, the 23 pin ones for the floppy, not for the floppy. Well, yeah, I think the floppy drive uses one, doesn't it? And the uh, video uh, socket there, but I don't. <laughs> it's super hard to find those. There's 23 pin connectors. You can modify 25 pin ones by cutting them and stuff and reshaping the uh, metal that goes around them. But first of all, I don't know if you've checked when, the, when my pump does that, usually it's solder sticking uh, in the inside of the tip. Yeah, I think it probably is. The, the issues we had with this uh, pump yesterday, I mean, I, I won't bore you with it because I could literally spend just 10 minutes cleaning that up, but it probably is. The, the metal part that comes out here, it's probably just got bits of solder on it because we used it to remove that uh, low melting point solder three or so streams or four streams back when we removed the, the, uh, the buster from the uh, 4000 board there. Uh, Nefers, good to see you here again. Um, thank you very much uh, for taking on board the moderator role. I don't know if it's still got you as a moderator. I'll just, uh, just check that. Hang on. Hang on a minute, my Mac's doing a weird thing where you add moderator. Yeah, I need to see if there's a way to per make that permanent actually. Um, yeah, but I'll make it up to you one way or another at some point for, for doing that for me. Um, if you don't have them, you miss one. D23 is rare. Yes, it is. Japanese engineer solder suckers are the best you can buy for manual. I'll have a look. I'll have a look at. Is that a particular brand? I'm guessing it is. I'll have a look at that. So anyway, without further ado, let's let's test these first. We'll come back to that in a minute, and then we'll perhaps uh, have a look at what else we can move on to. Uh, I'll take the Mac over with me as well. Just bear with me a sec. Sorry, carpet view. It's a bit bright in here today. I've uh, let some uh, sunlight in. Uh, I'll open the blinds a bit there just to let some light into the room. So we've got uh, 4,000 here, let's bring this 4,000 down. Yeah, this shouldn't be too long, I don't think. But it, it, it's interesting. I'm interested to see whether these clocks will both work, it will work on both boards with just a new chip. Because I really don't want to have to swap the, certainly not on this one, because there's quite a few wires around there. Don't really want to have to swap it for uh, a HCT version if I can avoid it. So we've got power. Let's just make sure that CPU card's in it is. Let's touch that. Uh, where's the floppy drive gone? So let's connect the floppy drive up here. That's it. Um, we'll just sit it there. It's fine. There's nothing actually exposed under that drive, by the way. It's got a solid metal piece um, on it. So you can't really see that because I'm zoomed so close there. Yeah, this drive here. I'm just sitting it on the edge of the connect here, but as you can see, there's nothing uh, there to short or anything. I mean, it could do if you sat it on the board like that. 
but it'll be fine just to boot us up. Um, something I have pointed out in other videos, but I didn't mention it um, in the last few. See this here? You've got to be careful. You know, you get one of those on one of those jumpers there like that, uh, you could have an issue. So it's always worth just making sure you've not got any uh, issues like that anywhere. So we need the chip, don't we? So anyway, let's just get the, I've got the SD wrist strap here this time with these. Um, I mean, typically with certain chips, I mean like those, <laughs> 7.4 series chips, you know, I'm not that fussed because you can just replace them easy. These were a bit more difficult to find. I had to order these from France. Um, and as uh, somebody pointed out yesterday, I think more than one person may have done, once the chip's on a board, you tend to find it's um, better protected from ESD. But when you're actually just handling the individual chip itself, yeah, you can have more of a problem. And I, I don't want to have to replace one of these and go and hunt for a one of these, it's, ironically, it's easy to find custom chips. These custom chips, you can, out, 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 analogic, sell pretty much all of them. Yeah, they're a bit pricey, but you can replace them pretty easy. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Amiga Kit probably sell these real-time clock chips as well, but I think they were a bit dearer from real from Amiga Kit. They were like 10 or £15 each or something, I think. They might be £8, honestly. can't remember. But I did get these a bit cheaper than that. Um, oh, super hard to get that in. It's because I've got turn pin. There, there we go. So the chip's in, pin one is towards the top. Uh, I've got a sys test in the drive. I'll catch up with the chat in a second. Let's just put the uh, camera up here and point you up. That mega drive, by the way. Look how dusty it is. <laughs> yeah, someone pointed that out yesterday. I'll clean that. Um, I don't think you want to watch a video of me vacuuming everything in here, but I will do that uh, perhaps tomorrow. It's uh, long since overdue. Usually the stuff in here is kept clean. But uh, with everything that's gone on with the Archimedes, I've just, I haven't just i have had a minute. Since I lost my job, I haven't had a blooming minute. It's like I just feel like I've just been doing repair after repair after repair. So uh, let's get the mouse in. There we go. So if we go down to the, uh, there we go, that one, battery back clock. There we go. It's actually it's not far off the right, well, yeah, I was going to say it's not far off the right date. Is it? It's got the wrong year there, 2055. Let me zoom you a little bit just so you can I kind of see that a bit better. Scroll you up a little bit. Yeah, so you can see it's uh, the time, is that visible? Yeah, it is, the time's ticking away there. That's a good sign. Now what was happening before is when you clicked reset time and day here, it went crazy and it hasn't done. Oh yes, that works. So that was the, looks like, that was the final piece of the puzzle on that board. Uh, Mike Pound, hi Chris, nice to see you again. Sam Parks, hey, ZX Kim 81 Beeps, nice to see you again, mate. Lots of familiar faces. I always like to see you guys. Um, yeah, not missed too much there. Just see lots of people joining and saying hi. Yeah, hi guys. Glad you've joined and glad you're safe. Uh, so if we go to set time and date, let's just set it. We'll do a power cycle and see if it uh, saves it. So uh, it's April. Oh, hang on, it's the fourth and I've just gone past it. I don't think you can go backwards with right click. No, you can't. So the 4th of April, 2020, Saturday, that's correct. Uh, what time is it now? 3.13. 14, 15, 13, save and exit. So, I mean, that, that is looking really, really promising, actually. So let's switch it off. Leave it off just for a, a few seconds there. Joseph Neal, just join. Hi, Joseph, nice to see you again. You're always first on my videos with a comment there. <laughs> Much appreciate Gadget Gauntlet, hey, I like that game. Uh, hi Gauntlet, nice to see you. Uh, Chris, Tian, hi, hey there mate, made it early to stream today. <laughs> it might not be a long stream, um, I don't know, I don't know, we'll just see, we'll see how things go on. It's sometimes quite difficult, well I think it is quite difficult trying to work out what to do with streams, what content and stuff. If I had loads of certain types of faults and things here, I'd, be, I'd have no choice, you know, I'd have a lot of choice to choose from uh, with what to look at. But I've got really long time consuming repairs lined up here, so it's like pretty difficult. Uh, battery back clock, there we go, it's held a look. Saturday, April 4th, 1514. Just for good measure, we'll just power off again. I'll do the same thing, then we'll just quickly swap over to the other board. But I think that that one, is now 100%, which is just amazing. That now means I can just, I can finish just clean it up and uh, get one of these, get the, you know, the good news over to Stephen and get one back to him. Um, and he can start using it. Yep, yeah, there we go. No worries. 
So I'll just uh, switch that off. We'll point you down here again. I'll zoom you back out a little bit. We'll leave that chip on there. May as well. Now it's uh, it's working. Just realised I've still got my SD wrist strap on. I didn't need it. I'm going to end up walking up, walking off with that SD wrist strap in a minute. You watch. Uh, so let's move that one out of the way. Yeah, now I'm realising I've got it on because it's restricting me. Put the other board down. Bring this board in. Um, now, this hasn't got kickstart at the moment. It's got diagram, but you can test it within diagram. So uh, let's see what happens there, I think. Uh, we need the other chip now, don't we? So let's, let's get the other chip out of here. Let's have a look at the comments while I'm trying to get the tape off that. Now, so I can just realise I need to go on to uh, live, all chat instead of, uh, or top, not top. What's it called? Uh, live chat, that's what I need. Because I'm probably missing lots of messages. I find it pretty easy, um, and electronics are really. Uh, surprised they don't suffer from Y2K. Yeah, Mahats just said, surprised they don't suffer from the Y2K bug. Um, Lots of this old uh, real-time clock stuff seems amazing, really. They seem to have, they seem to be quite resilient. They do work. They will probably end up having another bug um, further on from Y2K. Isn't there talk of a is it 80, 50, 2050 bug or something? I don't know. There's another bug on the way, isn't there? I'm sure there is. So because this is um, uh, something to point out, actually, I can see that straight away. I don't know whether you'll be able to tell. They're kind of covered in solder. These are described as new. But there's no, they're not. They're no way. They're no way new. They've been covered in solder there. That's not what you would, uh, you know, not that like, not like that. It wouldn't look like that. That looks super shining, glossy, like someone's. Uh, I don't know. Took it off an old button. In fact, look at the length of the pins. Can you see the length of the pins there? Those are not normal length. Let me see if we've got another different chip here. Here you go. Here's one of the original ones taken out of uh, the four thousand. There. Look at the length in the length difference there on the pins. I hope that's uh, clear. There on the camera, yeah. The, the ends have been chopped off. This has been taken off a board, reclaimed, and they've uh, someone's like you know cleaned it up and tinned the pins there. Um, but the, the legs are a little bit gull winged, so uh, I just need to put it on a flat surface. Where's the best place? The best place actually is that top of that power supply over there. Just pull it over here a bit. You can see I've got the uh, wrist strap connected to there because the chassis is earthed, it's not easy to, to twist it. Yeah, sort of hold it, just press it a little bit like that, re-inspect, it's a bit straight in here, nearer to 90 degrees. See how I get on with that. Might have to bend them a bit more yet. Hang on. Camera's trying to make you go for it again. Yeah, because you've got turn pin here, it's more important that the, the you know, lined as possible, because otherwise you just can't get it to go in. Not bent a pin there, have I? No, have I? Yeah, I bent two of the pins down a little bit there. Let's try it again. Let's try the other side first. Oh. And of course, the problem is exacerbated here by the fact that the legs are short. I'm just trying to straighten some of those. Up a little bit. Come on. Let's try the other side. Oh my goodness, why is it not going in? Do you know, it might be easier to just take the chip off the other board and try that, but I do want to test the chip at the same time. Is that in? Yeah, surprisingly, that's in. It didn't go in as easy as it should have done. Anyway, let's connect the power. Connect up the mouse. Floppy drive again. I'll stick the power first, because then the floppy drive can sort of sit on the top of the power there. The, the things on this here are isolated, by the way. Someone was worried about those shorting something out, but yeah, as long as you're careful, 
there's no reason that should short to anything. Just check nothing else is shorting. Okay, let's uh, let's give that a go. I think. I'm just thinking actually that's not boot from floppy anyway. I don't know why I'm connecting the floppy drive up. And in fact it's not booted at all, is it? Oh uh, is it because it's got no RAM in it? No, it should be doing something. That's strange. It should be doing something, even without RAM. Because it's got diagram in there. Let me just uh, check the chat. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's uh, not booting next. Let's just take the uh, CPU card off. So you can't really see what I'm doing. So we've got, we've got low, high. Let's just disconnect the floppy drive. Because we don't need it. It's got diagram on there. Uh, get the CPU card up again. That chip's not hot, is it? Yeah, I wonder if that chip's stopping it from booting, actually. Let's uh, spunk you down again. Let's, let's just try and take that uh, chip out. If I can. Ah, let me just get my screwdriver. Just give me a sec. Now you may be wondering how could a chip stop it from booting, but actually there are some, I think there are some data bus connections onto these chips. There's a chance I bent one of the pins putting it in. Oh, bent the pins now. Only a little bit. Let's just try it without it. Um, make sure I'm not missing anything obvious here. Yeah, it should give us like a green and black flashing bars without that actually, without a RAM. We'll have to stick some RAM in it. See if that's any different. Mm, nope. Have we now got a black screen in A4000 board here? It would have seemed that way, wouldn't it? Shouldn't be booting there. This was working. This was working. Let's just disconnect that. I am a little confused. You got low, high, jumpers right. Hmm. Let's just uh, go back to the chat again. This is not what I expected at all. I'm supposed to be testing a RAM chip here. I'm not working out if there's now a new problem with this board. Let me uh, let me just try changing the CPU card over again. And reseat that crystal. Uh, let's try the other card. I mean, the one thing I did do with this, I'm just thinking about it, is I took that, that buster off there again uh, and I reseated it. I don't think I tested it after I reseated it. I can't see that being the problem, though. Let's just stick some RAM in it. I don't think it needs RAM in it, though. Let's get the RAM off the other ball. Hang on a sec. Switch it off. Yeah, it shouldn't need this because it should should give us an error when there's no RAM in there anyway. But yeah, you can see it's black screening again. Oh. oh.
Let me uh, let's try taking that buster out. Bear in mind, like I say, look, it's easy to get that out because you know the socket is not as structurally sound as it should be with the thing on the bottom. It has got the thing on the bottom, but it's uh, you know it's perhaps not as good as it would have been originally. So let's, let's just try it without that. I'm just curious to see, do I get anything different? No, I don't. Eric Hurley, hey Chris, hope you're well, buddy. Thank you. Um, oh, Beta Master, thank you for that donation there. Much, much, much appreciated. Yeah, if you've got uh, something important or you know a, a question or something, try and fire it directly at me with the at you know at Gadget UK one six four, and then I'll spot it a bit easier. Um, that's not giving me any difference at all. Let's uh, think about this. And get that back in because we know it's definitely not that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm going quiet. I'm just a bit stumped by this. This was definitely working. This was definitely working. Let me just have a quick inspection on the underside here. Yeah, so I see no explanation as to why this wouldn't be booting. Let's just uh, make sure this is connected. I wonder if I should try and swap those crystals over because I have had problems with that main crystal. Sorry, I know you can't see the screen, it's blacky. It's just black. The other thing I'm thinking here is I wonder if at some point I took these out and put... Oh, look, that's got a bent pen. Can you see that? I think that's a... Yeah, I think what probably happened is we got this board work and we tested it with the other ROMs and then at some point I stuck these ROMs back in and went, ah, I'll do that later, you know, I'll test that later and then didn't do anything with it. That's one danger. If you to stick a chip in a board and think, you know, stick it in and think, right, I'll deal with it later and then forget you've done it... Yeah, this is what will happen. Egg on your face on a live stream. <laughs> anyway, let's try that again now. See if see if that's any better. Hey, now it's better. There you go. Oh, simplest of things, you know. I, I mean, I guess the benefit of me doing these streams like this, it shows A, I'm not perfect, but B, this is the sort of thing you can get if you're not careful. You know, I was, about half of you, that, I was waiting for the comments, actually. I was waiting for the comments someone to go, oh, well, it's ESD. There you go. You've been messing around on the carpet for a few days. You've killed it. I knew I hadn't. I just wasn't entirely sure what was going on. So uh, if I right, switch it off, get the clutch chip back in, just bear with me a sec. I'm trying to find the blooming thing there. It's not that one. It's that one with the super short legs. Uh, to make sure the pins are straight. Yeah, the corner ones, I bent them a little bit when I pulled that chip out before. But anyway, they're now nice and straight. I know, I know one thing for sure. It, Live streams never go according to plan. Right, so the chip's in, I think. Yeah, I'll switch it back on. Um, we'll use the, the test there uh, in the diagram. Now, it does say in there it's a prototype, and it may go crazy. So this might prove nothing. We might need to borrow the uh, chip, uh, you know, kickstarts uh, chips off the other board if we want to get anything meaningful, but we'll soon find out. So, where is it now? Some other tests, I think. Yeah, real-time clock chip test. Yeah, so you can see the issue there. It does say at the bottom there in red, this function is under development. Output can be, output can be weird, strange, and false. So, I think we just need to just quickly borrow the kickstart uh, runs. Uh, hello, Spitfire RAF. Nice to see you. Uh, Sure, it's getting power. Yeah, well, we've ruled it out now. We, we know what the issue is. But well, thanks for the suggestion. Sorry, I didn't see some of them. Uh, let me just move my mic a little bit. Retro HQ. I'm glad 
you get the same stupid problems I do. That is really rare though, it's really super rare for me to bend a pin. And in fact, I've done all the super rare things. The, the last three or four streams I've done, I've had things happen that never happened to me. I have never stuck a chip in like that and had a pin nut inside a socket. The last time that happened to me was probably, I don't know, four, five, six years ago, a long time ago. It's very, very rare. Uh, and it's a similar thing with that IDE, even though that wasn't the issue the other day when we looked at that stream. I did, one of the pens was a little bit bent. I'm usually, I've usually got hawk eyes at spotting things like that, and I'm like, ooh, that one's a bit bent, and I'll straighten it out. But um, in that instance, yeah, I wasn't. I mean, that wasn't actually the problem. It, was, it wasn't outside of the socket, it was just not straight. Usually I'm super good at spotting things like that from a, a mile away. There we go. And that was out. So I'll just quickly get the other ones off the other board. First one off, second one, half off. One consequence of uh, taking chips in and out of sockets like this, by the time we're done, they might need new sockets on these boards. You know, they get quite worn. Can you see here? They get worn because obviously, you know, sticking chips in and out, in and out, levering numerous times. Ideally, some ZIF sockets would be nice, but I'm not sure there's enough clearance. You know, because they're so close to each other. So there we go, kick start in. Let's get that there. Flopper drive connected again. Being mindful. That is on properly. Why doesn't that? There we go. That's it. I was going to say, why doesn't that want to go on? Uh, power. I'm sure I've not attached my ESD wrist strap to anything. No, I haven't. So let's try that again now with the uh, kickstart. Uh, oh, another donation. Thank you very much. Not expected at all. Uh, let me just move that. Yeah, I'm not sure that's booting from floppy actually. I'm not even sure that's booting again. Uh, an extended grey screen there, haven't we? I'm just looking to see if uh, I've done anything stupid again. I don't think I have. No, it's booting now. I think it was just looking for the hard disk. Yeah, there we go. That's that's normal. Trust, yeah, trust me, that's normal. I've just forgotten. If you look at the hard disk connector, you get about a 30 second delay. It spends quite a while looking for that hard drive. So, uh, CIA battery and uh, clock, let's the battery back clock, let's do that. And it's working, isn't it? It's ticking away there. Let's try the reset, because this is where it went crazy. Oh, yes. So that's both boards, 100%. Both boards, 100%. Joystick ports work, mouse works, sound works, uh, chip RAM works, fast RAM works. We haven't tested the serial ports. Um, in theory, we could do that actually while we're here, can't we? I could go and bring that dongle over from uh, Tom, plug that into the serial port. Well, in fact, let's just do that. Let's go and grab that. Hang on a sec. I'll catch up with the chat in a minute. And we'll see if the serial ports uh, work on these as well. I've got no reason to believe they wouldn't, they wouldn't do because on both of these boards, uh, well, neither of them have suffered from any problems around the area of the board where the plus 12 and minus 12. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about this actually. I think the serial port on this one isn't it combined with the um, keyboard socket? I think it is. Let me just show you the back of one of these boards. Hang on a sec. Yeah, it's kind of put a, a high jinx in my uh, plans there actually to test that. Because I was like, oh, I could just plug this in and test it. I don't think I can on the 4000. I think it's just like the CD32. Could be wrong. If you know, please post. Good God, the donations are coming in here. Thank you very much for that. Uh, again, we've got a few there. Uh, Simon Parks, £10, much appreciated. Uh, Edwin Newlander, ten ninety nine, fantastic, oh my go goodness, uh, can't keep up, hang on a second, I'm trying to scroll up the screen there, $20, oh my god, I can't say your name, X Monsuk from Seattle, Washington, USA, really enjoy watching your repair videos uh, along with Jan uh, and Adrian, yeah, Adrian Black and uh, Jan Beta, you should check their channels out, I watch their videos frequently. We both do really interesting uh, videos and live streams from time to time as well. Um, mostly on Commodore stuff, and you know, that's what I like. I do like the Commodore stuff, but 
that said, you'll know that I'm not kind of... I'm biased in some ways. I'm biased towards Commodore stuff. But I appreciate and can see value in every other system that's been released. You know, I have a lot of love for the Spectrum, Sinclair products, for some of the NEC stuff, the SNK arcade boards, um, the Archimedes, some of the other Acorn models like the BDC. So, I'm, you know, I try to be a bit more broad... Um, based in the things that I'm covering but just because I'm interested in everything really <laughs> that's what it comes down to but yeah if you like Commodore as I do they love Commodore so what about Jan Beater's uh, channel and uh, Adrian Black and there's other channels as well like Miss Mad Lemon you can't not watch or subscribe to Miss Mad Lemon she's uh, recently um, did you see anyone seen that hi-fi uh, thing I, I, I can't remember the name of it it's a boombox anyone been watching that uh, the wiring has been quite scary, I think, at times. So she'd probably admit herself, but wow, what an end result. At the end of the day, you know, the, the video she uploaded the day, it sounds amazing. The options and things she's built in, the different types of Dolby and reverb and all that sort of stuff, it's amazing. It goes to show that when you spend some time, you know, you put the hours in, you can uh, produce something really nice at the end of it. And she, of course, she could tidy that up. You know, some people might go, well, you know, the wiring's a, a nightmare. Uh, and it is with any kind of thing you build yourself like that, a prototype. But you know what? She could refine that. She could get help from, um, uh, what's he called? Um, the guy who designed the SID box there and help her design, you know, get up to speed with some of the PCB design stuff. And she could design a series of uh, boards. Anyway, let me just uh, try and get back to where it was and see if I missed any more. Uh, thank you very much for those donations. And ZX Kim as well. Um, I'm not doing these streams expecting these donations at all. And Beatermaster, thank you very much. I'm not expecting donations, but you know, when I do get these, it just it means the world to me because, um, well, you know, you know, times are hard and stuff. And I know people out there are suffering at the moment with the financial situation, you know, because of furlough and not being able to work. Some people work in the hospitality side of things and they're not getting tips and not getting customers coming in and stuff like that. So I realise, you know, times are tight. And for you to donate, you know, things you've donated so far is just unbelievable. Thank you very much. Uh, am I getting, I'm getting, still getting donations here. It's crazy. Yeah, so Charles, thank you ever so much for that. And uh, another one there, Big t Trees. Big Trees. Thank you ever so much. Um, it's every, as I keep saying, every single dollar makes a difference because I can buy flux and tools. And, you know, I was talking about the other day, I need a fan. I'm going to get an extract fan there, just a cheap one or something so that I'm not breathing in uh, fumes. I'll show you just out of interest, because I'm sure you're curious to see what happens if you put a faulty one in there and how I came to the conclusion that uh, that was the uh, fault, actually. Um, but, as I said at the start, I wasn't entirely sure whether it would fix it and whether we'd need um, to swap out the HC174 for HCT174. And the difference, I think, and again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, the HCT chip has got TTL compatible outputs, I think. Um, but we've proven that's not the case. You can put HCT, uh, sorry, HC174 on these in the clock circuit there if you need to. So I've got two ICs here I'm looking at in my hands. I can perhaps show you them. These were the original ones off those boards. Uh, let me show you what happens if I flip the first one here. Now, this is this the, is this the one that drove me nuts? Let's have a look. It may well be, it might not be. No, I think that's booting, isn't it? Just give it a minute to boot from floppy. Charles Bell, worth every penny, Chris. I've learned so much. Thank you ever so much, really. That's like I say, I'm getting speechless. You're going to make me cry. I'm going to cry on the live stream. Uh, here we go, anyway. Uh, and that's, yeah, it's uh, 30. Gadget. I can print 3D one feeds, uh, mate, if it'll save you some cash. Uh, 3D. 3D print what? Um, yeah, I'm out of context. I don't know. I can't remember what you're talking about. 3D print what? Um, so if you test the clock again now, so you can see that it says invalid date time. It needs reset. What time you reset it? Look at that. See it going crazy. So yeah, I had that same behaviour with that chip on both boards, and that made me think. Well, there's a chance it's the chip, but because it's the same on both boards, maybe it's the uh, the fact that we've got HC. 174 instead of HCT 174, but we've now proven that's not the case. So if you get that out, I'll show you the other one as well, because 
I'll be interested to see what this one does with Kickstart, actually, because, um, and I don't want to spoil it, because you're better off watching the series of these videos when I upload the actual, you know, the main part of the repair to these. Uh, there will be two or three uh, videos. I'll try and shorten it a little bit, but there'll be two or three parts to that. So let's see what happens with that one. I've got a feeling it's going to boot, actually, just based on the, the fact that it seems to be temperature related. Um, so let's have a look at these comments. Yeah, so uh, Zenit's Kim has got about 3D printing something for me. Uh, Oh, the fan. The, oh, the fan solder extractor. Oh, wow, that'd be great. If there is a model or something out there, and it wouldn't cost you too much. Or, you know, let me know the cost. So maybe I can buy something off you rather than spend some money. I can get, use a 12 volt power supply fan or something, the sort of thing you get in the ATX power supply. So maybe that would uh, do the job. Uh, Mike Simcox, any terrible fire tea today? Uh, no, not at the moment. Uh, not got a drink in here. I could do it just get, get a water at some point. I might just nip out and. 30 seconds just get a drink. You can see that's not booting now, I think. I think that's not booting. That should have that should have booted by now. It's hard to believe, but a real-time clock is stopping this board from booting. Um, and it's because there are some, and I'll perhaps show you on the schematics, there are some, I think, data bus connections there. But trust me, that is not booting. That's been long enough, hasn't it? That's been more than 30 seconds. And what happens if you put diagram in there? I won't show you that now because I've captured that footage on the, the, the main repair series for this one anyway, so you'll see it. But you get really crazy stuff on the display. You get like bars, coloured bars, going from left to right, and you get doubled up text. You get text. When you've got the text, you know, it comes up with the different boards and things it's testing, the amount of RAM and all that. You get so far down that you get some graphical corruptions along the bottom of the screen, and then you get those coloured bars like flickering across and some weird stuff where the text starts doubling up at the top of the screen and i was like oh my goodness what on earth is this how are we get you know this board is perfect how is it doing this now and it was just a last ditched attempt i thought well you know what the only thing i, I i'm not 100 percent sure about because we haven't haven't tested it fully is the real-time clock well, let's desolder the real-time clock and i pulled the real-time clock off and lo and behold it started booting perfectly um and then i tried the same that same chip in the other board and saw the exact same behavior on the other board so there you go that's just something useful that when you're dealing with clock problems on these uh, and problems in general where you've got a big problem with the board and you can't get it to boot consider removing that maybe that's the first thing you should do if you've got corrosion in here and you, you've fixed it all up and it's still not boot just pull that off don't even attempt to get your clock working just remove it and uh, remove it out of the equation um, anyway that's really good news though because that now means both boards work perfectly it's just cosmetic stuff now. And, and, you know, cosmetic is just purely cosmetic. What I mean is just tidying up some of the solder points. You know, I'll go to this with a bit of solder, a bit of flux, reflow the odd thing where I've been probing it a bit because the pins got look a little bit... Um, you know, you can see marks on them where you've probed them fairly intensively. So there's an odd chip that I'll have to uh, just, you know, reflow. And the other little copper trace to... Uh, cover up and there'll still be the odd corroded wire in places where i think oh i really should uh, you know scratch the surface of that on both sides tin it up and uh, and you can plug them some of them have plugged them where a wire is definitely broken you'd want to plug it so you need to get cut a piece of kinar feed it through the wire quite a long piece like that sort of long feed it through straight through to the other side so you've got i don't know about that much on that side each side of the board one on the top one on the bottom uh, and just solder solder the point until it joins turn the board over solder the point until it joins and then just snip off the excess bits and you've plugged through the via so there's just a few of those sort of things to do uh, i'll just power that just up one more time now with the uh uh proper working chip just to make sure that's that's working because i don't want to do what i did before there and leave it in a state where i've stuck something in that i think should be all right and then just put the board away without actually testing it because you know what It'll come back to bite me, won't it? It'll probably stop working next week. It won't be working when I come to power it up and I'll be like, oh my God, what's wrong with this board now? And I'll just bent a pin on it or something and not test it. Oh my goodness, another donation there from Jonathan uh, Wicket. Thanks ever so much, Jonathan. It, it means the world to me, it really does. Um, all these donations as well are helping, up with the, helping out big time with the 20% pay cut I've got at the moment as well. So uh, yeah, just can't thank you enough. I really can't, from the bottom of my heart. So let's just check the timer again. Clock rather, not timer. Reset it. Yeah, that's all all right. So we'll disconnect that now. We'll fly back over to the mat. I'll just clean up that serial dongle, I think. Um, 
Did I finish showing you the round of the back, back of that board? I don't think I did. They got sidetracked, didn't they? Yeah, serial. So that that is not serial. That's the floppy drive connector there. I think is that twenty three pin? Yeah, it is. Because it looks a bit shorter than these. Can you see? These are twenty five pin. That's twenty three pin. And then you've got parallel port. Is that a serial port? I don't think it is. Isn't that the port? Or maybe it is a serial port. I don't know. We can have a look at the schematics in a minute. But I was thinking, like the A4000, maybe the serial comes through here, but I could be wrong now. That might be the serial port. Should we just try and stick something in there, actually, to test it? Maybe that's risking it a little bit if it's a power. It can't be a power port. Power loss, or is it? Hang on. Let's, does anybody know? Does anybody know what that top floaty port is? Is it a power port? Uh, just trying to catch up in the chat. Electron Ash. I'm just tweeting about Amp Project if you're interested. Not much to see yet though, Lord. Uh, Graham Tinkers, Mike Simcox. It took me a while to figure out what Jan did. Um, yeah, talking about something that Jan Beta's done there, I think. Uh, so, shall we try that? Shall we try plugging that in there? You know what's coming next? I'm going to kill a poor armor. Because that will fit in there. Just need to make sure nothing's short. Let's try it. It can't be a parallel port. It wouldn't. Yeah, no, it can't be a parallel port. It's a serial port, isn't it? I think it's parallel and serial on the back. I think that's what those two ports are. So I'll point you back at the screen. Let's just, uh, I don't know, go into the serial test there and see, see what it says. I'm hoping it comes up with nice green boxes because if it does, uh, we've. Uh, I've now got a way to test the serial ports as well. You know, on these thousands, and we've ruled them out. We've tested them. You could do a similar thing with a parallel port. There's another loom you can wire, you know, you can wire it yourself to uh, test the parallel port there. But I'm not going to do that in this stream. We'll be out forever. But cleaning that, and the solder connections up on that in a minute will only take a minute or two. Let's see what happens there. Ooh, we've got an interesting issue there. So it, that is the serial port because the loopbacks there are working, but we've got an issue there. Look, eight and twenty-two. So maybe we have a, a serial port fault on this as well. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what he said. It's perfect. So, oh, that might have to be another repair. I don't know. I'm just going to check that harness on so that loom thing on the back, just in case something's become detached or something. But no, I don't think so. It would appear that that board's got an issue. Shall we test the other board? It might take me a minute just to change over the uh, ROMs. Let me do that. It's only going to take a sec. So, any of you guys uh, have Netflix? I like Netflix. It's it's really good and it's it's reasonably affordable. I think you can get it for just around five pound a month, can't you? If you get the SD version, which if you're viewing on a laptop or you know something like that, you can get away with it. I think it's only about seven or eight pounds for the HD. Thing for a month. Um, I've been watching that Money Heist. I love it. It's a Spanish uh, thing. Um, you can watch it either with uh, you know subtitles or there's English voiceovers, uh, and they're not bad actually. They're not bad voiceovers, but it's really well worth watching. If you like things like Breaking Bad and stuff like that, it's probably right up your street. Um, and season four of that has just been released, actually, in the middle of everything that's going on. Season four's out, which uh, I'm super looking forward to uh, watching. Uh, what have I just done with those chips right? Yeah, sorry, Yana, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just swapping everything over. We may as well just do the same thing and see if we get the same error. Because maybe the loom's not right, or maybe that other one just have a serial fault. I'm sure Steve will be pleased I found and fixed it eventually, if uh, that is the case. Because if he's going to use these boards for prototyping and working on uh, some cards and things and upgrades and things for the A4000, he's going to need the serial port, I'm sure. Because I know what he's like. He develops all this stuff and has, uh, ends up having like a serial client or something running. I know he, he does that from when he's using Workbench, actually. He uses the serial stuff there quite a bit you know it gets like a command line and connects remotely to uh, workbench get the video up again and we'll get the dongle and I think we're good to go let's just make sure everything's isolated it is switch it on 
Let's see what happens with this one. Sorry, I know it's not mega exciting. Things don't go to plan. That took, that took no time to boot from the thing there, did it? That's really weird. Why does that other board take 30 seconds to check for the hard disk and this one doesn't? There's definitely a difference between these two boards. Because power that back on again, just watch. Yeah, that's really weird. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I know that it, it works. I mean, I'll stick the hard disk on it after we've done this, just to make sure it's finding the hard disk again. But uh, give it the mouse. Uh, serial, serial. See what happens there now. Ah, it's all green. So, we've got a serial fault on that other board. Oh, this is Tom Meads' fault. If he'd not sent me that blooming serial thing, I'd now be convinced that board's all right and sent it out. But you know what? It saved some embarrassment, doesn't it? This is why it's important that you do test everything. So uh, I'll point you down. We'll just have a quick look at that uh, other board to see see if we can just work out what might be the issue with it. I'll just get my wrist strap back on again. To avoid the ESD police squawking. So if we turn the board this way up. Um, yeah, so this is the port. This is the port we've just tested here. So, it's going to be something around that area of the board, isn't it? Might need to just have a look on uh, PCB Explorer together. That might be the easiest thing. I mean, I'm not going to try and fix it today. <clears throat> For one thing, I won't have the chips. There's going to be something like a 1488 and 1489 on here, or something similar, I would think. Um, because these are identical. I mean, they're not. It's, a dip. it's the PLCC version, but they're identical to what you get on a 500 just in PLCC form. So there must be uh, something that does the same job that those 1488 and 1489s do. Well, I'll have a look over there, I think, with the magnifier. I'll just see if we can see. Because we might have an SMD version of one of those here. So apologies if someone's uh, posting that in the chat. Uh, better Call Saul, yeah, Better Call Saul's also, also well on Netflix. Uh, and Breaking Bad, if you've never seen Breaking Bad, seriously, you do not know what you're missing out. You really should watch Breaking Bad. I have uh, enjoyed that so much. I've watched it probably four times back to back now. And just last week, with everything going on, I thought, oh, hang on a minute. I need to get to my happy place, happy place, happy place. I need to get to, you know, put myself in a comfort zone kind of thing. What can I do? I know, I'll start watching uh, Breaking Bad again. So I started watching it again. You know, just from the stress of everything that's going on. Anyway, let's uh, move that out of the way. So, yeah, we've got one board with a serial 100%. Both of the real-time clocks are now proven to be working. That's good. But we do have a serial fault, so that'll be another repair. Good for you, it's not for me. I'm never going to end with these, am I? After we've done that, I'll test the parallel ports and find one of the parallel ports that doesn't work or something. Um, they certainly have not been easy, these boards, I have to admit. It's a bit of everything, as you will see when we do the series there. Um, part two of the Archimedes uh, 3000s was supposed to go up early in the week, but with doing these streams, obviously, I spent the time with this. Normally, I'd be like spending the whole day editing one of those videos, so I might do that tomorrow, edit that tomorrow, get that up tomorrow for Patreons. Um, and then at some point when I'm not doing the live streams, uh, the next thing I'll get up as part of my regular series is probably. A mega CD repair that'll just mix things up a little bit. You can have a look at that, and then then I'll get on to releasing the series of these before going back to some of the other videos I've got. Um, anyway, we'll just take this board over there to the to the mat. Let's just put it down. We'll take it over to the mat. I'll bring the laptop back over, and we'll just uh, have a look, see if we can work out what in terms of the serial might be the issue. We'll have a look at that. So I'm going to take a minute to do, and then we can perhaps uh, have a look at something else. I don't know. Spectrum or something. Uh, it's it's a question of having the right things out in terms of cables and power supplies and all that. But I think, uh, yeah, I think we should be all right. We can certainly at least look at them if we, even if we can't power them. So uh, let's bring the Mac over. Yeah, the common thing with these streams, if you haven't gathered, is nothing goes to plan. I say, oh, this is only going to take a few minutes. Half an hour later, we're done testing something that should have took two minutes. Right, let's to get a drink, guys. I'll, I'll be literally 30 seconds, just bear with me.
Right back guys, sorry about that. I had to get just some water. I haven't got my terrible fire cup, it's in the sink at the moment. So, uh, let me just catch up a little bit. Gadget, have you watched uh, Mad Men? I've not seen that, is that any good? Uh, Michael's Workshop, uh, are you the chap that kindly sent me the box from Canada? Are you based in Canada? I think you may well be. Uh, I was going to mention that. I'm going to have to look at that box in a minute if you are. Um, PC, I'm looking at A4000 schematics, so it looks like A4000 has MC1488 and MC1489, just SMD version. New 304 and new 305. Thank you very much for posting that because that now makes things super easy, doesn't it? We can have a quick look. I'll zoom it in. Uh, let me just see if I can find where those are. New 304, 305, I think he said. Uh, oh, I see them. Yeah, I see them. Uh, that's pretty simple. Let me just bring the camera over. I'll try and zoom you. Sorry, it's going to wobble a little bit while I try and uh, get the in focus a little bit, if I can. Is that going to focus? It's not focusing, is it? Oh, there you go. So, yeah, you've got one here and one here. So I'm going to have to order one of those, uh, one, one of each, and then we've got them. But it was a good job I tested that, isn't it? It really is. So thanks to Tom again. We've uh, identified a problem with the serial port on one of these boards as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was well worth doing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to bore you too much with this. All I was going to do with this, switch the headcam on. And we'll, uh, I'll just move that board out of the way. We don't need that on the mat at the moment. Oh, I'll be so happy when that 4,000, both those 4,000 are completely finished. Uh, and we'll just pull off the excess wires here and then just um, get a bit of heat shrink tubing over the uh, other bits and stick it inside a housing. It'll all take a minute. While I'm doing that, we'll have a bit of a chat and I'll just think what I can be showing you next. I might show you that box actually from, uh, I think it's Michael's workshop. Yes, he did. Thank you very much, Michael. I'll show that in a minute. Um, it's very, very much appreciated and it's blown me away actually seeing what you send me. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's look back. <laughs> Mike Simcox, 1.21 gigawatts uh, down the uh, 5 volt rail. Yeah, that's probably what's happened to that serial port. I think the thing is with the serial ports as well is this pins, isn't it? You know, I'll bring that board back in a minute and show you what I mean. You know, you've got pins exposed here. So, you know, if you just shove your finger in there, you can damage that with ESD. But try and ESD damage one of these here. You can still, in theory, do it because it can, you know, it can fly off of you into the pin that's in the thing there. But these are a lot less sort of sensitive than something like that. Very easy to prod that, you know, putting your fingers around the back, trying to get to a cable or something. It's the same with the video connection there. But anyway... That's that. So the irons uh, warm up a bit here. Um, yeah, so as we covered in that video uh, yesterday, lots of these wires not used, and you can see the way that this has been let. It must have been a fully wired one, and then he's just used the what left the wires on there, you know, just trimmed them off and just used the ones he needs. But like, uh, may as well just like literally pull pull these off, any that are non, not used, pull them off. So we'll heat and pull them off. And then I can just get a bit of heat shrink on. It's going to be a one minute job, this I think, Max. It's two. And stick a label on it as well. And I'll send it back to Tom. I'm going to make, let's say, my own up, but I'll do that off camera. Perhaps show you that in another stream when it's been done. Where's that one going now? It's on the next row down here. Look. Sorry if you can't really see what I'm doing there. See so if we can move the camera a little bit. Yeah, that might be a bit better. Yeah, just these rogue wires here that are serving no purpose. Just get rid of the blooming things. The solder might not look great after I've removed one or two of these. That one's not melting, is it? Good God. Um, but it's not that important, is it? It's going to have a housing around it. So those ones are joined together. It's these single ones I just need to focus on. But I mean, I tell you what, speed things up. 
you know, a lot here, is just cut the blooming things off, actually. What's the point? This is only ever going to be used as a uh, diagnostics thing. It's just hard to see. Look, that one's there, it's all right. It's hard to see what's, uh, what's used and what's not. Trying to do them in order. If I do them in order, in theory, it's a bit easier. Get rid of that one. Sorry, not exciting. Uh, I seem to be saying sorry, not exciting a lot, don't I? It's because I am conscious of when I watch live streams, I know what sends me to sleep, and this is just the sort of thing that would send me to sleep, actually. Uh, anyway, well, let's just get it done, and then it's done. Uh, I'm just thinking about the logistics of what I need to do with a Spectrum, if I want to get that Spectrum out. I think I know where it is, the, the 48k one. We can have a look at it. Have a look at that next. See if it works. I mean, I've got the Futures 8-bit um, MMC thing here as well, so that that's close to hand. It means I don't have to go and try and search for the uh, Lotharag one. I know what's going to happen at the end of this. I'm going to realise I've chopped off one of the ones that I needed. That's what's going to happen. Is it that one? Yeah, it's that one there. And that. That one. Trying to leave the, the pin, just, you know, cut the wire. You could, in theory, spend some time with the solder pump and suck out all the little bits there. But, uh, anyway, that will do. What, what what I could do now is just literally, you know, trim these down a little bit. I could redo them and make them super short, but they've got to go inside the houses, so it doesn't really matter anyway. And these, uh, to a degree, seem to be twisted together here, so we'll add a little bit more solder onto them. And then uh, a little bit of heat shrink and stick them inside the housing. So I'll just uh, catch him back with the chart. Era 42, it's amazing how much time can be spent looking at diagrams and there are still things to be discovered. That's the thing, you know, it's like I've looked at that, these uh, A4000 schematics so much over the last uh, month, I would say. Um, because there's been large gaps in between, you know, where I've been waiting for parts and things. So like for the first few weeks, they just sat in the box because I couldn't... Uh, get the cap kit and stuff, and then when all that cap kit and everything arrived, I started looking at schematics. So I spent a lot of hours looking at the schematics, and uh, I don't think at any point there I saw those 1488s and 1489s, because probably the page that I wasn't looking at, the only one, was to do with the serial. There's very few pages of that schematic I've not had to look at. So yeah, we'll just get crazy solder on those like that. Uh, I'll just switch the hot air on, and turn it down to 100, I think. Just turning it down, hang on, 300, 290, 280, 270, 260, 200 degrees, keep going, that'll do, but 129, that'll be fine. Um, just get some uh, heat shrink tubing out, got to move a few things out of the way in order to get some heat shrink tubing. We'll just, just put that lot down there a minute, okay, let's talk about some of those things as well in a minute. Um, and find my heat shrink tubing. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it may seem like chaos in here. It's like an organised chaos. I have stuff all over the place, but it's kind of an organised chaos. Uh, and of course, you know, all my main... I've got lots of tools and components and things, but they're in the, sh uh, the uh, garage. I keep a lot of things out of the way. I just keep in here what I need close to hand. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to getting the heat shrink out, I have to juggle a few things to get to it, but nevertheless, I can uh, get to it. So, that, that thickness maybe, that'll do the job, I think. It doesn't really matter that it's blue. For things like this that, you know, where it's just internal to something, it, I'll uh, typically just go with this. Cut that into three bits, I think. Cut that bit in half. <sighs> And um, we'll just get a bit of heat shrink over there, like that. Um, bring in the hot air. 
And just get that little shrink. That'll do. Get the next one on. Put that there in a minute. It's only low temperature, 100 and something degrees, 130. Could have really done with wider heat shrink actually. It's alright, it's gone over there. Can you see that? It's gone over the bottom. If it's not encapsulating the bottom of the wire, it's, uh, it's not thick enough. It's not wide enough. You need uh, slightly wider. Not really a big deal anyway, because you know what? They ain't going to move around, are they? Once they're inside the house in there, as long as they're squished away from each other, they're not going to short onto each other. Anyway, that'll do the job. The last one on. And if, when I make one of these myself, I wouldn't have them this long. You could literally just join the pins together with a little bit of wire between them. You don't need crazy long wire like that. It was just the, the, the fact that I think Tom's repurposed this from uh, a fully wired cable. You just use what was already there, which I guess speeds things up, doesn't it? If it's, it's already got wires on it, it just means you join the ends. That'll do. So the final part to making something like this, like I say, more uh, robust and giving you a nice little tool to add to your collection, you know, your arsenal of diagnostic things, is to get something like that, get the housing for it. So if we just, uh, this is one of these ones where you clip. Sometimes these are things just held with screws, but other times you get a clip on each side. It can be a pain to get into these, actually. Um, I, I've got recollections that this one, let me just put that wire back over there. This one came from a parallel port adapter that I made. So you can connect a PlayStation controller to a parallel port. And then uh, with a bit of uh, a driver that someone wrote, you could, uh, on Windows 95 and 98, you can use that PlayStation 1 controller with uh, f rumble as well you know force feedback on a pc um just with a series of diodes this might be the one we'll soon find out when we see what's inside it there might be nothing inside it no it's, it's oh there you go you can see i've moved whatever was inside it a long time since but uh, yeah all you need to do is like say stick it there fold these up inside so that they stay within the cavity and away from each other try not to break that wire off there Just inspect that. Got a hair there. Yeah, that's all right. So I'll just uh, try and fold them inside, and then I can clip the top back on. I think <laughs> it's not going to go back together now, is it? Is that it? Yeah, there we go. So uh, we'll just uh, bring in the label pincer. Yeah, something else useful to have. Hello, <laughs> I think I'm back again. Oh, what a calamity that was. It's like, the battery decided to go, didn't it? I didn't think of many warnings. It probably did, but like the messages, I don't think I was uh, listening. Hang on. So I was putting you, uh, hang on, put you back down there. Uh, clip you back into awful thing. Hang on. Please stay on. <laughs> right, so, uh, with a charger. I don't know how much of that you actually caught before power went off there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's nothing professional about this. Is it Potato Vision? <laughs> oh, Potato Vision, he cracked me up. Oh, good old Electron Ash. Yeah, so I'm not sure how much you saw that. Did you see me clipping it back together? Anyway, it's clipped back together. So the next thing I was going to show you, and uh, yeah, there's nothing exciting about this. I'm just showing you stupid things here now. Let's uh, switch the label maker on. Um, we'll put on it uh, a little label. I'm trying to think the best place to stick it. Uh, we'll do it in the super small print, I think, here. So uh, format, <laughs> size, extra dusty. Uh, hang on, extra small. Uh, so I can type in R, S. I'm not even going to put the hyphen. It'll take too long to find the bleeding thing. Uh, D232. Uh, uh, we'll just print that off. I mean, it's obvious it's RS232, but he'll know what it is. You could put something more meaningful on there, like Tester 
or something. What I need now, some scissors. <laughs> I don't think I've got any scissors here, have I? Uh, let's, let's just go old school. <laughs> let's go medieval on it and uh, use the uh, cutters here instead. There we go. Yeah, label makers are so useful. They really are. Although this label's probably a bit too wide to stick anywhere now. It's going to be too, too wide to stick there. Uh, hmm, stick it on the side. I don't know. Probably just stick it there. Anyway. I might just redo a label for that later. But anyway, there's no mistaking what that is. I'll, that will go back with that A500 board. So, uh, what was I going to show you next? We can have a look at the Spectrum, I think. We can do that. Before we do that, I'll just have a look at these little bits of random stuff that I just picked up over here. Because, again, some of these are going to be future, you know, content of future videos. So, I can show you this here from Furtec. Um, I'm hoping to show you something else very exciting from Furtec soon. Uh, hopefully that'll happen. It's uh, just a question of uh, timing, really. So, you can see this here. This is one of the little chips that Furtec uh, produced here for the Neo Geo. This is, I think, a replacement G0. You see that on there, actually. Yeah, it's Neo G0. So look at that. That's just amazing. Super small. And he's done the same thing that I did with the uh, uh, the one I created there for the Neo Geo, you know, castellated edges. But well, he's done a good job of it. He's had that manufactured by somewhere that'll do castellated edges like that. I think this one, actually, was a proto, and there's an issue with this. The chip's... Uh, something's wired incorrectly, so I can't even use this to test it. The plan was I was going to remove one of my G0 chips and test one of these chips for him, but, as I say, this one's a proto. So at some point, I'll just take the chips off that and use them as spares, but it's a bit, it seems a bit sad to do that, but nevertheless, I thought you'd see that, find that interesting. You can see there, there's that decapped Neo GRC I showed on a previous stream as well. That came along with this, so I'll do a video on this soon. It didn't look like this originally. It didn't have this red tape here. I ended up sticking that there just to assist me when I stick it into my AES because it uh, catches a little bit. But I think he's got a, an FRAM chip on here. So if you're not familiar, the difference between FRAM with an F, F for Freddy, uh, versus SRAM. Uh, FRAM is kind of like a solid state. You know, you don't need a battery. Uh, whereas SRAM would need to be battery powered. So yeah, it's just a memory card here for uh, Neo Geo. AES, but we'll have a look at that. I'll do a video in its own right. We'll just quickly get out the AES and have a play around with that and test it. Uh, not mega exciting, but, well, it is. It's exciting for me. I can't, I've not really used it yet, so I'm looking forward to uh, having a play around with that. Uh, and then the flyer and stuff that came with that as well. Uh, but this here that I may, I think I still may do a build of this at some point. You've seen me do the 330. Terrible fire, uh, TF330 there. Uh, this is one of the earlier boards in the series, this. Which one's this? This one's the 530. So uh, primarily aimed at the A500, and I think it only has 2 meg of RAM. So, you know, you stick 2 meg of RAM on here, you've got 2 meg of Zorro 3. And again, it's got IDE. Um, it's got room for an FPU there. You know, it's got the standard uh, 68,000 dip uh, arrangement there going on. Your 030 socket and a CPLD and a CPLD and a few little passives and things. So that should be nice. I'll have a, sorry, I'm keep going to the right-hand side over there, don't I? That should be nice. We'll have a look at that. I've got a few different terrible fire boards, actually, that I might just do builds of at some point. Um, and you might wonder why. Well, why not? You know, I've got lots, I've got 500s and things here. I could stick one of those on one of my 500s, and that's what I'm thinking. Um, I know 30 to a 500 uh, really excites me. <laughs> uh, it's amazing what I get excited about. Anyway, um... So we'll keep this uh, Spectrum ROM out here. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to plug that straight into a Spectrum, actually, because of the uh, pin differences. Uh, move that out of the way, back over there. Uh, you can see the audio connectors that came off these 4000s here, um, and one that uh, had a bit of an accident. This one on the right here was a brand new one. Terrible fire. I just see a comment there. There is a TF536 on my bench. Yeah, Stephen's um, kindly reminded me there, the TF536, I've mentioned it briefly. Uh, a number of times. I'm hoping to have a look at one of those uh, at some point myself, uh, or build one myself, either way. Um, the TF536 is the um, successor, if you like, to the 534. Um, and that has more RAM. It's got, I think, is it 64 mega RAM, Stephen? 64 mega Zorro 3 RAM. So the, the, the TF536 is kind of like the 
creme de la creme of the uh, the series for the, you know the, for the five hundred and two thousand. Although it's not you know neither of them are directly aimed at the two thousand, but uh, yeah, they, they will work in the two thousand. You've just got to be mindful of you know are you going to have lots and lots of Zorro cars in there? If you are, you might find some issues you know because not all things coexist with each other and. The, the TF534 and probably the 536 aren't really aimed at those systems, but then again, more testing might have gone on with the 536 and you know it might be uh, more compatible with a 2000. But anyway, really nice. So, showing you these uh, sockets again. And I did talk about this in the, the Cathus series here. Why is it saying low battery now? We've got power. So I think it's just rem reminding me there's a low battery, but it's charging. Yeah, we've got, we've got power anyway. Um, this is one of the ones from Amiga kit this connector here and if I put them um, so the the plastic housing sorry we're off there aren't we so the plastic housing is aligned here um, you may not be able to tell now because this one's missing a prong but normally the prong comes out here um, it comes out here and it's kind of bent down this way a bit but it it's not as low uh, sorry it's not as uh, it's not in the exact same position there that's really not a good example. Let me just see if I've got the white one. I've got a brand new white one here. That will be crystal clear. If you compare this white one here to the other one. Yeah, if you're thinking of doing streams, think twice. Streams are not easy to do. Because I'm, uh, you know, I'm just not on the camera half the time. I'm going off the screen. Yeah, this should be a bit more obvious. Uh, hang on. This should be a bit more obvious. So if I put the screwdriver here, look where the pin on the right is. Uh, hang on. Trying to get a good angle so that you can see it and I can see what I'm doing. Can you see the difference though? Can you see this one? This one here is lower down than this one here. And it isn't just a case of just bending this little bit. It's almost like on the original one, this whole... Let me see if I can show you. This bit here, can you see that bit? That bit there needs folding straight upwards. You need to bend it right up. Hence why that one on that red one broke off. It was really difficult to do. And the other difference with these ones from Amiga Kit... Uh, and I'm, I'm not I'm not blaming Amiga Kit here because you've got you know beggars can't be choosers. You've got to go with whatever's available on the market, and it might turn out that these are the only things you can get. But can you see here? These are bent in. Can you see that? If I just get that at an angle, you can see that's bent inwards at that point. And these aren't. So you've got to, and it's really difficult to bend that. You've got to bend that so that it goes into the cavity here and goes straight down that way, um, as well as as I say, trying to uh, bend. This bit might be a bit more visible there. You know, you can see they're, they're not in the same place at all. And by the time you get it on the board, what ends up happening? They end up sticking out. So if you were to try and put it back in a case, you won't be able to fit it in there. Yeah, but anyway, beggars can't be choosers. Uh, so I'll just catch up the comments again. Again, if there's anything I've missed, please send me a direct... Uh, you know, comment there and uh, so it highlights it at Gadget UK one six four. It'll uh, highlight it for me, and then I don't miss it. Uh, so the other thing we've got here is what's that? It's a faulty chip. That I think. Who is it? Where did that come from? Yeah, I'm looking at that now. I don't know what that is. Six five five C five one. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I've got a chip here floating around. I'm not sure what it is. I'll stick it over there. Um, that might be off an Archimedes. Oh, it's off an Archimedes. Yeah, that's right. And there's another one that goes with it. Yeah, those two repair off an Archimedes. Um, yeah, we'll cover that when we come to one of the Archimedes videos. So let's move that thing out of the way. So these are the old ports. Um, just look at that. Can you see? You can see the greenness that's coming out really well there. Look how green those are. Um, and look at the undersides. One or two, look at this one here. This is the one that was super corroded and we lost it. Can you see the through hole? There's the through hole plates in that. Um, so I can get it to focus a little bit. Yeah, you can see the uh, sort of reddish brownish through hole plates in there. But you can see how green these are. <laughs> they're, they're really bad. Look at the corrosion there on the underside of that. Horrendous. Uh, anyway, now you know why there was a bit of damage around the uh, ports there when I came to get those off. So uh, we'll dig through one of those boxes, I think, and just have a quick look at one of these uh, Spectrums. And I might see if I can connect it up. Let me go and find the box. Just give me a minute, guys. I think it's one of these here. In fact, we'll do two things. I'll show you that in a second. It's 
SSC. It's the XPS. Yeah, there's a spectrum in there, right? Let me grab this box. Sorry, I know you can't hear me from over there. You're probably wondering what on earth I'm doing. I'm just bringing two boxes over. So, yeah, space is a bit of a premium here. Hang on. Let's have a bit of a juggle around. Move some of these things out of the way. Move that ROM out of the way as well, actually. And I'll just put you back a little bit, just because the box is pretty big. I want to put it down there if I can. So, together, we will have a look inside this box and hopefully not lose the power. So, uh, these came from my uh, friend, good friend Andrew, Dr. Andrew. Uh, so, you can see there, Dig Dug for the C64. Oh, that's really sweet. I love that game, and to get an actual original car of that... It's uh, yeah, it means the world to me. And yeah, Andrew's uh, children used these. Obviously, Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, <laughs> age thirteen and a something. I can't remember what it's called now. Three quarters suit hands and anyone ever play that on the C sixty four? I'm guessing it's going to be uh, not great. These any book and movie tie-ins typically tended up to be not very good unless it was an ocean game. C sixty four Music Maker and the uh, thing for that. It's lacking the, I think, didn't you get a keyboard or something with it though? And that's lacking, that's missing. Um, yeah, Dig Dug, that's the flyer for that cart there. Uh, I showed these things on Twitter actually as well. Look at that pole position, brand new, unopened, squished a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's seen better days, hasn't it? But it's, it's unowned. <laughs> that's unbelievable. That is absolutely unbelievable, pole position. I mean, it's not a fantastic version of pole position, is it? The C64 version, but... And original C64 manual there. And it's pristine, that. It's as good as new. That's like the day it shipped. There's barely a crease in it or anything. So I'm really pleased to get that. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, it's looking a bit furry. <laughs> Look at this here. It looks like it's been in the garden. Doesn't it? Yeah. I hope it looks better than that on the inside. So we'll have a look at that in a sec. Uh, what else have we got here? Some of the bits and pieces. Uh, C64, Melbourne House. What's that, Sherlock? Anyone ever play that? Anyone know anything about it? I think these are C64 things as well. Are oh, the Maze Master? Yeah, cutting edge graphics look. Making full use of the Vic chip there. Uh, Ghost Manor and Spikes Peak. That sounds like a tongue twister. Spikes, yeah, Spikes Peak. I almost <laughs> didn't read that correctly. Uh, again, look at that, amazing graphics. Um, that one's, again, sealed. It's still in its original uh, plastic film. It's probably worth all of about 99 pence. Um, I can't get those back in now. I'll have to it with me other hand in a minute. So, some of the bits and pieces there, some floppy disks. This was interesting, um, because I was expecting to find a uh, Cura Microspeech, but sadly, it's not there. So, And I know he's cleared his entire house out, so it's probably going to skip. I reckon he skipped it, unfortunately. You know, put it on a... a Trash uh, thing, uh, so yeah. So it's a Cura micro slot. So uh, yeah, let me know if you want a micro slot because I've already got one of these. I don't need two. Anybody wants one, let me know. If you're happy to pay, what's it going to cost? That a pound fifty to post or something? I'll stick it in a jiffy bag. And uh, whoever's first to message me, you can have that. Um, yeah, there's this thing as well, and I, I'm familiar with this because I use one of these myself. <laughs> Uh, I followed this exact same course, T223. This is uh, a course, one of the courses I did with the Omni University, my, uh, Understanding Microprocessor Architecture. Um, so that there is an 8051, well, it's a member of the family, it's an 8031, actually. Um, uh, uh, MCU. So maybe it's not, maybe that's just a CPU, because I'm thinking it's, well, maybe I'm after some I.O. or something, because you've got ROM here, and then you've got RAM, some LEDs that you can use for, you know, working with this thing to do various things. Um, but yeah, this was part of the, that university course there. You can see it's got serial connections on the right there. Um, it's got a thing here for a temperature probe. And that was connected, I've just unplugged it. It's floating around somewhere. Um, but that was really good. And I, I would say if you want to learn anything about microprocessor architecture, 
consider doing something like that. If you you know if, if you're a programmer or something like that, you're going to find it pretty easy um, starting on a course for something like this. But I mean, you, this is the sort of thing you may have studied at university or college anyway. If you're if you're a programmer, but if you're not, if you've just done some programming. If you can do a bit of C or a bit of Visual Basic, and you want to know a bit more about the inner workings of chips and things, consider looking at the Open University to see what they've got in the way of the because there'll be a newer version of this. I think they they changed the course from T two two three to two three four. And then it's been followed on with other courses since. There's more modern courses. Because I, I think I did this one back in about 2000. You know, since then, things have moved on a lot. I don't. I doubt they'll still be using a chip like this. They're probably using things like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and things now. But anyway, that's that. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I've got lots of books and things in here as well. Uh, Max Headroom. Is that C64? Yeah, it is. Commodore 64 slash 128. Um... Yeah, anyway, some just bits and pieces, so let me stick all that back in there and we'll have a look at that spectrum. Can't wait to test those C64 carts. Sorry, you're going to have to just sit there a minute while I deal with that box. Before we have a look at that spectrum, I'll uh, just do the other thing I was going to do, which was to uh, just thank Michael's workshop. Uh, hang on. Yeah. And uh, have a look at this. So he sent me this uh, wonderful box all the way from Canada. Uh, so, yeah, some books. I think he said that this was a really good book. I can't quite remember now. So I'll take a look at that. But you might remember that I was a bit concerned, you know, I wouldn't be able to afford any games, even for my 360, where they're pretty cheap, you know, with the, when I lost my job. And he was like, oh, I'll send you, send you a load of stuff. And he sent these. Like Mass Effect 2, that's fantastic. I love that game. Uh, some other things here for the 360. Wipeout, Sean White Snowboarding, Xbox Live Arcade, uh, Fable 2, that's a really good game. Uh, Kinect, uh, Kinect Sports. Connect. You need the thing, don't I've got that, actually. I'm thinking about that. I've got that now. I've got Connect. Uh, yeah, I think I might have already opened that and read that. Let me just check what's on here. Hang on. Before I dive in and share someone's address or something. Yeah, there you go. In a recent video, a bit about men redundant from a job. I saw how you, uh, with things so rough. You might not be able to afford to purchase a new Xbox 360 game anymore. While well, I can't send you a new job in the email, in the mail, I can definitely send you the stack of... Uh, Three, Xbox 360 games so yeah I'll let you look at that I'm not going to read that whole thing but I am so appreciative of that um, I will be playing a lot of these games because they're right up my street certainly Mass Effect Mass Effect 2 um, yeah so very very much appreciate and uh, as you can see that's from Michael's workshop on YouTube so thank you very much Michael it must have cost you a fortune to post that all the way from Canada because it's a pretty heavy box so I can see you've got some extra uh, connectors and things in here, those are super useful. Uh, Halo 3 ODST, that's really good. Oh, Halo 3 as well. Fantastic. Uh, Blitz the League, yeah, American football's not my thing, but I'll give it a go anyway. Grand Theft Auto 3, fantastic. So, yeah, very much appreciated, Michael. Super stuff. Let's uh, just get that back in there. Get that over there, and we'll have a look at that uh, ZX Spectrum. So yeah, we've had a bit of unboxings within these videos and things like that, and just you know mentioning thanks to some of the people. Um, I do appreciate the effort and lengths that people go to to uh, help me out with uh, all these different things, whether it's uh, you know something small or something big, or you know it doesn't really matter what it is. All these things really significantly help me uh, and keep me sane, I guess. <laughs> Of course, the downside is uh, now I've got Mass Effect 2 there for 360. There might be less, there's some less videos. Once I start playing on that, <laughs> videos might go quiet for a week or two as I'm uh, playing Mass Effect 2. Yeah, that's really dirty. Look, I'm going to have to just maybe wipe that with something. Um, just let me go and get the spray. Yeah, I'm just going to go and get some soapy water. Just give me 10 seconds and we'll just wipe that before I start trying to take it apart. I'm 
back. I've got some uh, soapy water. I'm not going to spend ages cleaning it, don't worry. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh no, and Gadget starts cleaning things right for hours. But I just want to just get the majority of that um, soil, because that's what it looks like, off there. Oh. Yeah, I'll do. I think on that side. My stomach's uh, rumbling there. You can see it suffered a scratch there at some point in the past. Which, uh, yeah, it's no surprise, because like I say, he was throwing these things around when he was trying to clear his house out. He's got the builders around there at the moment, they're completely, more or less rebuilding his house. You know, doing all sorts of things, replacing some of the walls, and um, he's got like, I don't know, like, what do you call it? A flat roof that needs fixing. Uh, and they're just, he's been sending me photos, they're, they're just completely gutting it, absolutely gutting it and replacing everything. Like new floors, new doors, new walls. Uh, one of the load-bearing beams or something needs replacing. So you can see something's happened here. Is this stick just a sticker? I think it's had a sticker or something. It's all gooey and anyway, I think that'll do. Let's just clean that a little bit. No, cap, cap shift seen better day, doesn't it? Really soily. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've started now, and then I'm going to not finish. Am I? There you go, let's... Yeah, that'll do, that'll do, I think. We've got the majority of it off there. So, I think before I even attempt to try and power this up, we'll get the screws out. I'm just curious to have a look inside and see what state it's in. See if we can break the uh, keyboard ribbon while I'm at it, because that, that's the other thing, isn't it? I could test it now and find the keyboard's all right, but not after I've taken it to pieces. But you know what? We need to take it to pieces anyway, because I'd probably want to recap this. There's certain things, you know, as I mentioned the other day, you know, why re consider, you know, think carefully. Do you really need to recap everything you come across? But you know what? These spectrums, the caps in them are awful. They are seriously awful. Um, there are, I've got many C64 boards here that I haven't recapped, and I use them periodically from time to time. You know what? They're fine. But with a spectrum, it's, it's pretty rare if you find a spectrum that's got good caps in it. You know, they just they weren't very high quality back in the day. Um, so, yeah, they don't really stand the test of time. So this stuff, it kind of it kind of breaks, doesn't it? It's like really brittle. So I've got to be careful about how I disconnect this now. Let me just see if I can see the easiest way. Let's see if I can just slide that that way around. And if you want to watch uh, repairs on uh, Spectrums, there's uh, a really good channel you should watch. The guy who makes the... Uh, there's a, there's a div MMC, isn't it? I'm just trying to slide this up. I don't think you can see that. Just trying to grip it. Yeah, that's my mate Vince watch, by the way, that watch. <laughs> my mate Vince provided that. Just carefully see if I can pull this out without breaking it like that. And we'll do the same thing over here. Yeah, it's called Ben, isn't he? There's a, a Dutch guy. He, he produces um, all sorts of things, including the HDMI mods you can get for the uh, Spectrum there. I forget the name of his channel. I'll post some links to his channel down below afterwards. So you can see that's uh, survived all right, actually. That has survived okay. Neither of those have split. But, I mean, they may well do when I come to uh, get them back in. Sorry, I know it's Bob bouncing around there, but, yeah, I'm surprised that that's uh, survived. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at the board. Ooh, is it a 16K model? Hang on a minute, it's got lots of stuff missing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's never a good sign, is it? Um, wh why is there so much stuff missing? Hang on. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Start posting thoughts. What's going on there? Is this just the 16K one? These might not be needed. I've not got the extra RAM here. I don't know. I don't know. What issue is that? Uh, <laughs> does anybody know? Oh, there we go. Issue 2. Yeah, issue two. So it's an issue two spectrum there. Um, someone's pointed out Jules Pacullum also has some fantastic repairs. Yes, he does. He's done a number of uh, mods and things like that based on information that I learned from Jules Pacullum. The uh, ZX81 16K RAM uh, mod came from him and the uh, mod came from Jules Pacullum. Bike Delight. Yeah, there we go. That's the chat. Thanks for that, sir, guys. Um, just looking back to see if we missed any questions because you know what? I have. Uh, hang on. Yeah, I've uh, not been focused on the chat for a good hour, so I could have very easily missed something here. 
I've always had a theory that Gadget's wife just lets him use conservatory for storing the junk, but it's not allowed in the rest of the house, lol. Yeah, that's you think that, but to be honest, it's spreading throughout the house. <laughs> it's like next to my uh, computer there, I'll perhaps show you at some point when we go into the other room. Under the table, I've got a, a Dell to, um, 3, uh, what's it called? Not 3, yeah, 386, um, Pentium 2. And then I've got a monitor on there, I've got the A2000, an ST. Under the table, I've got super graphics, an A1200 keyboard sh uh, shell, uh, my oscilloscope. CD32 and various other things all piled up and this kind of like an extension of the front room so how I'm getting away with that I don't know actually in fact just yesterday she was a little bit crabbit at me saying uh, what's all this stuff under this table I'm going to be working from home from here next week you need to get rid of all this junk so yeah uh, yeah let's just say that's now starting to become a problem someone should say that about the 360 being region locked yeah isn't the 360 region locked uh, yes it is but that's uh, it's not going to stop me. I'm sure you can do something about that, like mod it, <laughs> for example. 360 is pretty old now. I might not mod the one I've got because it's perfect, but you know what? There's nothing to stop me getting another cheap 360 and modded it, making it region free. Uh, yeah, so does anybody know? Uh, let's say, coming back to this, do you know whether this is uh, just 16K? I'm guessing it is. I vaguely remember something about some of the chips not being needed here if you've only got 16k it's just really unusual because i've never this are oh, there you go it's a 16k there this is the first 16k one i've ever come across i think because they're nearly all 48k aren't they and the nice thing with this is this is socketed so we can just get some row in there anyway and i said that i've got to go and find the ram haven't i you can fit 4164s in there can't you um Hey Gadget, if I send you an AV Famicom and there's RGB, would you do it for a video? Uh, possibly. Possibly. Where would you be sending it from? Because that's the thing you've got to consider. If you're in the States or something, the shipping could be pretty uh, cost prohibitive. Um, anyway, I think that's in really nice condition. It's in really nice condition. Again, I'm not sure about the ULA, because there's a few different revisions of the ULA, isn't there? I mean, I think predominantly they're all manufactured by Ferranti. They might be the odd other manufacturer. I'm not that clued up, to be fair. Um, but yeah, <coughs> these caps, you would want to swap them. I would like to swap them. I wouldn't like to leave them on there. Um, maybe we should just go and uh, give this a try. Uh, I need a power supply, though. That's the thing. It's not got a bridge, has it? Just remind me, does anyone know? I think you can use, can't use a Mega Drive power supply with these. Or is the polarity wrong? I have got a Spectrum power supply, obviously, but it's uh, in storage. Just reading comments again here. Gadget, would you be able to di do diagnostics and repairs to A12 boards? Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, I would. It's, it's just trying to get the right thing to look at. Um, what I don't want is something that someone's had a go at themselves and made a massive mess of that and that wasn't working to start with you know that's got multiple faults you know that's the thing really i prefer what i tend to prefer to do is start off with something that's uh, more manageable and then just work my way up as you know because i learn about each one of these things as i'm going through it you know i've probably fixed zero amiga well, i have fixed zero amiga 1200 motherboards in the past um because back when i was in the trade they're only just coming in you know 1200 was coming in as i was getting out really um, I think so, it was around that time. So I've got a comment there from ZX Kim, gadget center negative. Uh, and in fact, we can, you know, we can test that. It's just, you know, I'm asking questions here because I'm getting lazy, but the reality is if we just put the meter on the continuity test. Um, I'm trying to think where's a good place to take a ground, probably from one of these 7.4 series chips over here, just to be 100% sure. Because you know what, that might not be ground. It's going to the tab on the heatsink there. I know those heatsinks can sometimes... It probably is in this case. Is it the centre pin? Yeah, it's grounded. So the heatsink is ground. We can confirm that by touching uh, between the heatsink and one of the ground pins on the 7.4 series ICs there. So heatsink's ground. Let's just touch the centre. Yeah, so it's centre negative... 
I can confirm that with the Mega Drive power supply. In theory, that should work because obviously, you know, this thing just has a voltage regulator here to drop from whatever you put in down to five volts. I wouldn't uh, prolonged. I wouldn't use one prolonged on the Mega Drive power supply just because they don't output nine volts often like their stamps. They output like fourteen volts or something. You know what? That's just going to get super, super, super hot with any amount of uh, you know use for extended time. It's got the dead bug uh, mod. This isn't it, where you have a like, little Transistor there with the legs, you know, spread out and wires going all over the place on it. There's lots of different mods to these, depending on the divisions. Um, I'm trying to think if I've got any of these chips here. And in theory, I think you can just stick 4164s in, can't you? And then you don't need to add jumpers. Uh, I'm not sure where the jumpers are on this. Usually there's like a position up here, isn't there? With the like little solder links. This rev, I'm not sure I know where it is. Maybe it's on the underside of the board. Um, Dave might be posting some stuff towards my questions here. He might know this, Dave Curran. Um, yeah, this is the one, though, that's got more of these uh, variable adjustments here. You know, so you've got a couple of variable caps here, uh, as well as the two variable resistors, just for adjusting the, uh, you know, the video output there. Shall we go and try it? Let me let me, uh, let me just remove the board first, remove the screw that holds the board in, I forget where it is now. Because if we do that, then I can clean up this, we can take over, um, I think I've got my, I'm not going to use the Futures 8-bit one, I'll tell you why I was thinking about that a minute ago. I've not got the SD card, I've not got an SD card for it, I don't think he's got one in it. I could check that, if it's got one in it, great, but if it hasn't, I'll uh, just go and use the uh, the other uh, adapter that I've got, the Lotharag one. Yeah, the screw's in the middle button on these, isn't it? Screw there. I'm expecting this to be fully working, but it might not be. Yeah, look at that. It's hardly had any use up of that, has it? It's really clean. Really clean. Anyway, we'll just clean that with a cotton bud. It's probably a good idea to cover this uh, this way on a video. If I end up doing a, you know, trying to do a normal video on it, there's nothing much to show you, is there? There's nothing wrong with it. It would have been a bit of a boring video, but if we just do it as a bit of extra content in this stream, then uh, there's nothing really lost. And of course, you can go over those sort of things with the pen laser or fiberglass pen as well, but look at that. That's, that's really good, that. That's never been used, that. You can tell nothing's been on that. Or if it has, it's just like one thing got plugged into it once at some point in its life, and then that's it. Yeah, that'll do. So let's just get that back in there. Where's the hole there? So, I may as well get that screw back in before I lose it as well, actually. Yeah, I'm not familiar with what uh, chips go uh, in here when you need to upgrade it to 48K. Why is that not sitting in there now? So don't over tighten the screws on these either. Uh, so we'll wheel over there. I'll bring the keyboard as well. We'll press if we can plug that back in and uh, try that in a minute. But we'll just see if it powers on. I think. Uh, let me take you over there. Oh, hang on a minute. Let me just think about the power. The phone might go off. <laughs> let me just see if there's any way. I can't tell on this blooming phone. Hmm. Uh, Just have to take you over there and hope the power doesn't go, and then we'll get back over here as quick as we can. Battery power six percent. Yeah, that's not good. I think what we'll do, just to be on the safe side, is I'll uh, bring the uh, extension over here. Yeah, things are getting really complicated really quickly, aren't they? <laughs> So I've sent a negative. Um, we need a power supply for a Mega Drive. Uh, let's try that one. 
Yeah, I needed to bring that extension over because uh, we'll just end up losing the power again, won't we? Not going to be on for much longer anyway now, guys, I don't think, because we've been going for quite a while. I'm sure um, people have got other things they want to do. Let me just see if that's the one that's powered up there. It might not be. I know you can't see the uh, meter. Yeah, it's not that one. Must be the one on the back of the CD, I think. Let's try that. I'm hoping it's uh, sent a negative. Hmm, it's not that one either. I think what I need to do, actually, is plug one of the other ones in across the other side. Bear with me. Let's try that one. Yeah, handily. The other one was uh, plugged in over there, sorry. Just give me a sec. Yeah, it's not that one, it must be this one. We've got that many adapters here. This is the problem with having a mega mega drive. You end up with uh, you know if you end up with if you have the mega C you know if the C D unit and the 32X, it's all very dusty as I explained earlier. Um you end up with three power supplies. So uh, yeah, you can just about see the meter there, I think, at an angle. If we just uh, measure this centre negative there. There you go, you can see 14, let me show you that. 14 volts roughly, centre negative. So yeah, it will work, but uh, you wouldn't want to do it for prolonged uh, use, as I said earlier. So let me just uh, connect to the RF. Oh. I prefer when these things have uh, been uh, modded to send composite out of the RF connection, actually. Because it's such a trauma trying to tune RF in. So I'll plug the RF in there. Uh, connect power. Let's just quickly just lift that off and measure the voltage here to make sure nothing's getting crazy hot. Uh, where are we going? We'll go from the ground. We'll take the ground from over here and just measure there. I don't think you can see that on the meter there, can you? No, you still can't see that on the meter. <laughs> Let me just move you around. Yeah, I'll try and get it so you can see the meter and the uh, what I'm measuring. Yeah, so we'll take the ground from the heat sink and then just, uh, you know, the uppermost pin on one of these 74 series chips. Yeah, you can't see for the blooming wire. And yeah, 4.9 volts. So the 5 volts is okay. The camera is trying to escape. Uh, let me move that out of the way. Sorry. This is why I need a break, I think. I'm just getting so, oh, I'm getting so much stuff all over the place here. It's, can't deal with all these things. Let's just try and balance that there. All right. So I'll lift you up here a minute. I'll point you at the screen and we'll try and uh, tune it in and see what it's doing. Maybe then try and connect to the uh, keyboard. Yeah, my advice to anybody thinking about doing a live stream, don't use a phone. If you do use a phone, get some proper type of uh, tripod or something for it. This thing's really not up to the job. Um, thank you for that. Oh, wow, another donation. Thanks for that donation. That's amazing. Um, I think what I'll do is uh, these donations is go away and look for a, a proper tripod for this phone, actually. So if we go into uh, tuning, how do we do that? Uh, TV menu, installation, channel. Uh, so what we should do actually let's just come back out there because I've probably got a channel I've probably got a channel already tuned into that roughly somewhere somewhere up there for one something I'm sure I've got something that should be oh there we go okay woohoo it works so yeah it's only 16k uh, you can tell that when you power one of these on because you get that black screen there and you see how quick that was you get a really short black screen if you've got 48k in there, the memory test takes a bit longer, and you know you, you can tell that black screen stays black for like twice as long, roughly a bit more than twice as long, perhaps. Uh, I'll try and connect the keyboard up. Let's let's do that. Yeah, I didn't think this uh, spectrum was going to be particularly exciting at this stage because. Hang on, the camera's at a crazy angle, works. Yeah, I apologise for the crazy angle. You're at 45 degrees. The camera's doing what the camera wants to do. Disconnect the power. Let's attempt, and this is the thing, this is where things can go awry. 
um, because these things just break for fun. It's a case of uh, trying to be as supportive as you can, you know, saying nice things to it and stuff as you try and... Uh, I'm trying to look, see where the silver bit is there. <clears throat> yeah, try and uh, whisper nice things into its ear while you carefully push it straight down and hold it. That's it, that's gone back in. I'm going to be careful not to pull it and do the other one. I can't even see where that goes in there. Now this one's, this is perhaps where, if I just connect that and do it this way then, it might be easier because you can see that it's being folded a certain way. Can you see it's being folded this way? Here. So it's better to do it this way. Come on, go back in there, don't break. You know you don't want to break, stay in one piece. There we are, that's it, it's done. Connect it back up and see what happens. I think we might have looked out on this totally. I think it being really dirty and having something gooey down here. You know what? That's uh, that's really good. Could always just uh, touch that with a black uh, marker or a black paint pen or something. Just touch that little bit there, and I reckon it's uh, it's going to come out really well. So let's get the power again. And I'll point you at the screen. Uh, hopefully, a slightly less less crazy angle if I can straighten that. Yeah. There we go, and let's press a key. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, zero. Q W E R T U I O P. Wow, it's working! I can't believe it. <laughs> I have really looked out with that. Yeah, let's try the bottom row. It said X C V B N M. Yeah, that works. Wow, fantastic! Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm tempted, maybe in another stream, maybe something tomorrow or something, I'll get some RAM and we'll pick up where I leave off today, maybe get some RAM in that and uh, test it uh, that way. I mean, I could just try getting the DIVI IDE on there. One thing that you can sometimes have with these is the Z80s can sometimes have a faulty M1 line and they shipped that way. They came that way from the factory because uh, I don't know whether it was um, they missed it or they just weren't, weren't bothered about the M1 line, but that M1 line is needed to... Uh, you know, use some of the carts and things like the, the certainly the Div IDE. Let me just go and get my Div IDE. We'll just try it. I don't know if I can find a 16K game that'll work. It must be something. Yeah, so I've got the uh, Lofrak Div, um, uh, Div IDE here. So this is the, uh, yeah, the painful one with the jumpers. Um, I'm just thinking, when did I last use this? I used it on that, um, I know, I used it on Conrad's, didn't I? I used it on Conrad's um, board. Did I leave it in plus two mode, or <laughs> didn't I? Oh, should I try it? I'll tell you all, let's try the Future's 8-bit one. Well, oh, that's, that's not Compact Flash, though, is it? Or is it? Let's have a look at the Future's 8-bit one. I will do a video in its own right, but just for the purposes of quickly testing this now, uh, I may as well just have a look at it, just to see if it can help us uh, out here. Because I know with this, you don't need to set any jumpers. Ah, oh, yeah, it's an SD look. It needs an SD card. It'll probably work without an SD card, so I don't know. Let's just see what it does without it. So, yeah, the power's off. Uh, let's just plug, plug it in. Yeah, I'm sure you can see that. Oh, there we go. Oh, good grief. I think my streams have got progressively worse. Do you, I think you'll agree. It's like over the last week, I've been doing all right, and then it's like things seem to have just deteriorated quite a lot in the last uh, 48 hours. Yeah, there we go. That's in. That's in. It's in as far as it will go. So uh, let's, let's try that. I'll uh, connect the power up. Got green light there, look. Point you at the screen. Bear in mind, we can't really do anything here than, other than just maybe press the NMI button and see what happens. Is that the reset button? I think that's the reset button, actually. Um, it might not be doing anything because it's not got a... Yeah, it's not got... Because it's not got a card in, I think it's just resetting it. Could be wrong. There's no other button on it. So, <laughs> yeah, I can't do anything else with that at this stage. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe we can, let's say, pick up tomorrow. 
and uh, I don't know, see if we can test some games on that, get some more memory in it. I might try and do the recap tomorrow. I'm probably going to have most of the capacitors in, but that might be a bit boring. It's uh, it's quite difficult to try and find subject material to do uh, on these streams, if I'm honest. I've got lots of things I can do here, but as I said earlier, lots of this is time consuming stuff. It can take hours and hours and hours. Um, what are your thoughts? You know, if I end up wanting to recap something like this, are you happy to watch that and me waffle? Uh, or would you rather I keep looking at some of the other things we've got here to see if we can find something that's faulty? Because we've got C64 there that could be faulty. There's also uh, another Spectrum here, a Spectrum Plus. Just reading the comments, camera's drunk. <laughs> uh, it needs files on the SD card, Chris, I think someone said there. Uh, I only have four packets left, dangerous close to starvation. We have all day, mate. Repair something. Um, yeah, so it's, I could, re well, you say repair something, so we could do that. I mean, like the obvious things that here, I've got piles of Archimedes. But if I do that, the first thing we're doing is putting them on the mat and spending an hour or half an hour desoldering things and all that sort of stuff. And then starting to reintroduce things before we get to maybe a point where it might get interesting with trying to diagnose where a fault is and where a connection is missing or where an IC might be faulty. It's uh, it's quite difficult. Um, anyway, I'll uh, put you at me because I think I'm going to probably get off now, guys, I think. Um, as I say, I might do a stream tomorrow. Just let me know maybe some ideas down below what you might want to uh, watch, really. What might be useful to you, uh, even if it's just a bit of waffle about a particular system. If there's an area of, the, of a board, that, you know, a system that, where you've got a problem, I could have a look at it. It's a bit like that serial thing yesterday. If someone had suggested that, we could have done the same sort of thing. Had we not had that fault, I could have stepped through things and explained perhaps how that area of the board works and stuff, and where you might want to look if you've got a fault. Um, Gaming Beagle, I'm strangely addicted. Uh, great channel. Sorry, finger in the way there. New sub, we're here to watch all is good. Thank you very much, much appreciated. I have free time, I'm in lockdown. Purple packet was always good. Fantastic stream once again, mate. Um, we'll just go and have a look at the uh, chat before I just dial out here, just making sure I've not missed anything. Because, uh, yeah, as you've noticed, I miss everything as we go along. Let's face it, who's not in lockdown? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got that Atari ST as well. That's something else we could have a look at. We've got an Atari ST here that um, I've got no idea what state it's in. I think the case was originally bashed up a little bit on it, but uh, that may have some faults and things. And I've got some other Atari ST bits and pieces we can uh, test on there as well. So maybe we could uh, do a stream on the ST. But I think I would finish that Spectrum off first, certainly with the RAM, because it won't take 10 minutes while it stick some RAM in it tomorrow. Um, and do a bit of a testing on it, maybe composite mod it, because that's a two minute job. Um, thanks Chris, great stream as always, thank you very much, uh, Ego Chip, goodbye. Andrew Clegg, I fixed the case, but it's dead. Oh, it's Andrew Clegg, thank you to Andrew Clegg that sent the ST. So yeah, that, there you go, it's dead, so we, that could be interesting, because we could have uh, a nice fault there to look at. Martin Wilkinson, do composite mod on the Specky. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. We'll do we'll fit the RAM as well. I'm sorry I can't really go on much longer. It's because it's getting near tea time and I've been at it all day. I've not even had any lunch today. Um, thank you ever so much for everything again. You know, I've had so many donations today. Didn't expect that at all. That's uh, it's just going to help out big time, as I say, with everything. With everything going on at the moment and the pay loss and everything. Um, that's just going to be brilliant. Thank you ever so much, guys. So take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Close it.